William Eindhoven. William Eindhoven was a Dutch doctor and physiologist. William Eindhoven was born on May 21, 1860 in Semarang on the island of Java in the former Dutch East Indies, now known as Indonesia. He invented the first practical electrocardiograph which is also called as ECG or EKG in the year 1895. He received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1924 for the discovery of the mechanism of the electrocardiogram. Before Eindhoven's time, it was known that the beating of the heart produced electrical currents, but the instruments of the time could not accurately measure this phenomenon without placing electrodes directly on the heart. Beginning in 1901, Eindhoven completed a series of prototypes of a string galvanometer. This device used a very thin filament of conductive wire passing between very strong electromagnets. When a current passed through the filament, the magnetic field created by the current would cause the string to move. A light shining on the string would cast a shadow on a moving roll of photographic paper, thus forming a continuous curve showing the movement of the string. The original machine required water cooling for the powerful electromagnets, required 5 people to operate it and weighed some 270 kilograms. This device increased the sensitivity of the standard galvanometer so that the electrical activity of the heart could be measured despite the insulation of flesh and bones. This invention allowed transthoracic electrocardiography. Although later technological advances brought about better and more portable EKG devices, much of the terminology used in describing an EKG originated with Eindhoven. His assignment of the letters P, Q, R, S and T to the various deflections are still used. His first important research in Leiden was published in 1892 on the function of the bronchial muscles investigated by a new method and on nervous asthma, a study of great merit mentioned as a great work in Nagel's Handbook der Physiology. At that time, he also began research into optics, the study of which occupied him ever since. Some publications in this field were a simple physiological explanation for various geometric optical illusions in 1898, the accommodation of the human eye in 1902, the form and magnitude of the electric responses of the eye to stimulation by light at various intensities with W.A. Jolie in 1908. Up till now, his talents had not yet been developed to the full. This opportunity came when, when he began the task of registering accurately the heart sounds using a capillary electrometer. With this in view, he investigated the theoretical principles of this instrument and devised methods of obtaining the necessary stability and of correcting mathematically the errors in the photographically registered results due to the inertia of the instrument. Having found these methods, he decided to carry out a thorough analysis of A.D. Wallace's electrocardiogram, a study which has remained classic in its field. This investigation led Eindhoven to intensify his research. To avoid complex mathematical corrections, he finally devised the string galvanometer, which did not involve these calculations. Although the principle in itself was obvious, and practical applications of it were made in the other fields of study. The instruments had to be precise and refined to make it usable for physiologists, and this took three years of laborious work. As a result of this, a galvanometer was produced which could be used in medical science as well as in technology. An instrument which was incomparable in its adaptability and speed of adjustment. He then, with P. Batterd, took up the study of the heart sounds, followed by research into the retina currents with W. A. Jolie. The electrocardiogram itself he studied in all its aspects with numerous pupils and with visiting scientists. It was this last research which earned him the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for 1924. In addition to this, the string galvanometer has proved of the highest value for the study of the periphery and sympathetic nerves. In the remaining years of his life, problems of acoustics and capacity studies came within the sphere of his interest. The construction of the string phonograph could be considered as a sequence of this. Eindhoven possessed the gift of being able to devote himself entirely to a particular field of study. His genius was actually more orientated towards physics than physiology. As a result, he was able to make penetrating inquiries into almost any subject which came within the scope of his interests, and to carry out his work to its logical conclusion. Eindhoven was a great believer in physical education. In his student days, he was a keen sportsman, repeatedly urging his comrades not to let the body perish. The string galvanometer has led 
countless investigators to study the functions and disease of the heart muscle. The laboratory at Leiden became a place of pilgrimage visited by the scientists from all over the world. For this, suffering mankind has much to owe to Eindhoven. In electrocardiography, the string galvanometer is the most reliable tool. Although it has been suppressed by portable types and by models utilizing amplification techniques used in radio communication, cardiograms from the string galvanometer have remained the standard of reference in numerous cases of this day. After his development of the string galvanometer, Eindhoven went on to describe the electrocardiographic features of a number of cardiovascular disorders. Later in life, Eindhoven turned his attention to the study of acoustics, particularly heart sounds, which he researched with Dr. P. Batard. In 1924, Eindhoven was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for inventing the first practical system of electrocardiography used in medical diagnosis. The term Eindhoven's triangle is named after him. It refers to the imaginary inverted equilateral triangle centered on the chest and the points being the standard leads on the arms and legs. Eindhoven was a member of the Dutch Royal Academy of Sciences, the meetings of which he hardly ever missed. He frequently took part in his debates himself and his sharp criticism frequently found weaknesses in many a lecture. Eindhoven died on the 29th of September 1927 after long suffering.